you can see the birth of the universe, provided that there is matter out there that is as old as the universe. With each new and captivating image, the James Webb Space Telescope continues to receive hits from all around the cosmos and even from planets in our solar system. A year ago, we were treated to our first taste, and the images, the Carina Nebula, Stefan's Quintet, and most dramatically, this so-called deep field image that appears to depict dozens of galaxies extending into the far reaches of the universe, did not let us down. The James Webb Space Telescope has recently discovered objects that completely disprove existing cosmological ideas. Hence, they are being dubbed universe breakers by astronomers. The reason for this remains a mystery, thereby rendering all of our predictions and hypotheses incorrect. So, what's new with the James Webb Telescope? What did it find out that we didn't know before? Join us as we explore how the James Webb Telescope found evidence of another universe that upends the Big Bang. We live in a universe that formed from a hotter, denser, and more uniform past. This theory, known as the Hot Big Bang, was one of the most significant scientific achievements of the last hundred years. It was shockingly validated in the mid-1960s with the discovery of the primeval fireball that remained from that early hot and dense state, today known as the cosmic microwave background. This was initially suggested as a serious alternative to some of the more mainstream explanations for the expanding universe. After an early inflationary era, the Big Bang has been the de facto hypothesis explaining our cosmic origins for over half a century. As fresh, crucial observations have come in, astronomers and astrophysicists have consistently challenged both cosmic inflation and the Big Bang. However, each time the alternatives have fallen by the wayside. Assuming that space, time, matter, and energy all originated with the Big Bang is a typical way to portray it. If one adopts an old-fashioned perspective, this becomes clear. Our growing and less dense universe must have been much smaller and denser once upon a time. If the universe contains radiation, such as photons, then the wavelength of that radiation will increase as the universe expands, indicating that it was hotter at the beginning of time and is now cooler. When one extrapolates far enough into the past, the density, temperature, and energy levels reach a position where a singularity can be created. The rules of physics become meaningless when dealing with extremely small distances, extremely short durations, or extremely high energy scales. The laws of physics are broken at 10 to 43 seconds, the Planck time, if we wind the clock backward by 13.8 billion years to the legendary zero inches mark. We would anticipate a great deal of historical transition if this picture of the universe were correct, that it started out hot and dense and then expanded and cooled. Massive amounts of all conceivable particles and antiparticles would be produced, with any surplus being destroyed by radiation as soon as the temperature drops too low to sustain their creation. Four basic forces and particles with non-zero rest masses are produced when the electroweak and Higgs symmetries collapse as the universe cools below the energy point at which they are restored. Atoms like protons and neutrons are made up of composite particles called quarks and gluons. The remaining particles are no longer effectively contacted by neutrinos. Deuterium, helium-3, helium-4, and lithium-7 are the light nuclei that result from the fusion of protons and neutrons. When the overdense zones become excessively dense, radiation pressure expands them and gravity grows them, resulting in a series of rhythmic, scale-dependent impressions. And some 380,000 years after the Big Bang, it cools down to a point where stable neutral atoms can be formed without being immediately blasted apart. At this final step, the photons dispersed throughout the universe by free electrons simply continue on their path, with wavelengths increasing and numbers decreasing as the universe expands. 
When this cosmic radiation background was initially found some 55 years ago, it propelled the Big Bang theory of the creation of the universe from a competing theory to the only one that fits the evidence. Most astronomers and astrophysicists promptly accepted the Big Bang, but the leading alternative steady-state theorists, such as Fred Hoyle, continued to come up with increasingly ridiculous claims to support their debunked theory in the face of mountainous evidence. But every single one of those ideas bombed. It was definitely not dwindling starlight, neither reflected light nor heated, radiating dust. The evidence disproved every possible explanation. The cosmic afterglow spectrum was too uniform in all directions, too perfect a black body, and too uncorrelated with the stuff in the universe to fit with these other theories. Hoyle and his ideological supporters fought to impede scientific advancement by promoting scientifically impossible alternatives, even as the scientific community progressed to the Big Bang as a consensus. In the end, science progressed and the contrarians lost ground. Their harmlessly flawed work faded into oblivion and their research program ended when they passed away. During this time, astronomy and astrophysics as a whole experienced phenomenal growth from the 1960s through the 2000s, with cosmology as a subfield seeing the most remarkable expansion. We found a vast cosmic web and laid out the universe's structure on a grand scale. We learned about the formation, evolution, and dynamical evolution of galaxies and the star populations within them. We discovered that the known types of matter and energy in the universe couldn't account for all the things we see. Thus, we need dark matter and dark energy. Simultaneously, there were undeniably accurate observations that the Big Bang could not account for in its prediction abilities. No exotic remnants such as magnetic monopoles, particles from grand unification, topological defects, etc., have been observed today despite the claim that the universe purportedly reached these arbitrary high energy and temperatures in the beginning. In theory, the universe we see could only be explained by forces beyond our current understanding, yet whatever such forces may have existed, they have remained hidden from our view. At its inception, the universe had to have a precise expansion rate that balanced the total energy density to within a few tenths of a percent if it was to have the characteristics we observe today. This is something that the Big Bang theory fails to account for. To be in thermal equilibrium or to have enough time to interact and exchange energy is the only way for diverse parts of space to have the same precise temperature. Still, there are a lot of areas that aren't related to each other causally since the universe is too large and has grown. Those exchanges would not have been possible even if light traveled at its fastest speed. This is a huge problem for the scientific community and cosmology specifically. When scientific theories fail to account for a particular phenomenon, two paths are open to us. We can try to come up with a theoretical mechanism that accounts for those occurrences, building on the prior theory's accomplishments, but also producing new predictions that are different from those of the prior theory. Alternatively, we could think that everything is as it seems and that the universe just came into being with the characteristics that make it what it is today. Even if the first strategy doesn't work, it's still worth trying because only the first one has any scientific merit. Cosmic inflation has been the most effective theoretical framework for postulating an elongated Big Bang. This framework posits an earlier stage of the universe's exponential expansion, during which it was flattened, endowed with uniform properties everywhere, expanded at a rate proportional to its energy density, rid of any remnants of high-energy events, and predicted the emergence of quantum fluctuations, which would cause a unique kind of density and temperature fluctuations on top of an otherwise continuous universe. A lot of people didn't like inflation, but it worked when everything else failed just like the Big Bang did. It finds a solution to the graceful exit problem, which is the question of how a universe that is growing at an exponential rate can change into one that is expanding at a rate consistent with our observations. That is, how it can recreate all the achievements of the initial Big Bang. 
it destroys any remnants of extremely high energy by imposing an energy cutoff. As a result, the expansion rate and total energy density are perfectly balanced, and the universe becomes quite uniform. Also, it predicts in a novel way what kinds of structures should form, and what kinds of initial temperature and density variations should manifest, and these predictions have been confirmed by observations. The forecasts for inflation were mostly fleshed out in the 1980s, but the observational data that supported them has trickled in over the last 30 years. There are many alternatives, but none of them work as well as inflation. Despite the fact that Nobel laureate Roger Penrose's work on general relativity, black holes and singularities in the 60s and 70s was truly Nobel-worthy, he has devoted a great deal of time and energy in recent years to a crusade to discredit inflation, advocating for a conformal cyclic cosmology that is inherently flawed from a scientific standpoint. The primary dissimilarity in predictions is that the conformal cyclic cosmology essentially mandates the presence of remnants from the universe before the Big Bang in the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale structure of the universe. In contrast, inflation dictates that the point at which inflation terminates and a hot Big Bang occurs must be causally separate from and unable to interact with any such region in the past, present, or future. Every part of our cosmos has its own unique set of characteristics. Therefore, we must trust that the universe will reveal to us what is true and what is just a theory, and we must follow the universe's guidance, no matter what it says. Even though they were amazed, astronomers quickly realized that something was wrong with the James Webb Space Telescope's photographs of planets and nebulae that it began transmitting from space in 2022. It is starting to appear, several months later, that we may have to reassess important aspects of the universe's beginning and evolution, based in part on what the telescope has shown. The discovery of completely formed galaxies much earlier than should have been conceivable, according to the so-called standard model of cosmology, was one of the first big findings of the Webb Space Telescope but it was exhilarating in an unsettling way. There is a fixed and precise sequence of events that occurred after the Big Bang, according to the standard model, which is the foundation of almost all research in the field. Firstly, stars and black holes formed when denser regions of the cooling cosmic gas were pulled together by gravity. Secondly, galaxies were formed when stars were pulled together by gravity. On the other hand, the web data showed that certain massive galaxies formed far too quickly, in too little time, at least by mainstream model estimates. This disparity was significant. Similar to how grandparents might appear in a novel while they are still children, the discovery involves parents and their children. On other occasions recently, the evidence supporting science's fundamental universe theory has been discovered to be woefully contradictory. Consider the question of the rate of expansion of the cosmos. The so-called Hubble constant is an essential aspect of cosmology, yet no one has been able to agree on a value for it. One approach uses measurements of the early cosmos, like the ones Webb is giving us, and the other uses measurements of nearby stars in the present cosmos to determine it. These two approaches still don't agree after decades of research. Scientists first thought this disparity would fade away when data quality improved. However, despite the data being significantly more exact, the problem has continued to exist. Additionally, the issue has been made worse by new data from the Webb spacecraft. It is the model, not the facts, that this pattern points to as flawed. Just two major problems with the current cosmological model should be cause for alarm. Although the model has undergone multiple revisions over the last 50 years to align with the most up-to-date data, some may argue that these changes were overly convenient given the current state of affairs, despite their likely necessity and correctness. Astronomers and physicists are beginning to suspect something is seriously wrong. Not only do some of us think the current cosmological model needs rethinking, but we may also need to radically alter our understanding of the universe's most fundamental characteristics, 
a paradigm shift with consequences well beyond the realm of science. The standard model of cosmology, a powerful amalgam of cherished abstract mathematical physics and hard-won evidence, is justifiably regarded as a triumph of human brilliance. It all started with the first piece of evidence for the Big Bang, which was found by Edwin Hubble in the 1920s, that the cosmos was expanding. After that, in 1964, radio astronomers uncovered the fossil radiation that had been emitted by the cosmos since its expansion had just begun, which is known as the cosmic microwave background. According to that discovery, the early cosmos was a dense, boiling soup of subatomic particles, but it has been steadily cooling and becoming less dense ever since. In order to explain the most up-to-date information about the cosmos, cosmology has grown increasingly exact during the last 60 years. However, in order to get such a high level of accuracy, astronomers have had to speculate about the presence of cosmic components for which there is no hard data. Another out-of-the-ordinary modification to the conventional model is cosmic inflation. It was proposed in 1981 as a solution to contradictions in an earlier Big Bang hypothesis. According to this theory, the early cosmos grew at an exponential rate for a brief moment following the Big Bang. Some problems are solved by this idea, but others are created by it. Importantly, the majority of theories hold that there isn't just one universe, but an endless number of them, with the possibility that we will never be able to observe any of them in either practice or theory. All things considered, these aspects of the baseline model do not raise any red flags. Hyperdense singularities within a black hole are an example of an observable phenomenon that has been supported by scientists' indirect evidence. One could reasonably question the validity of the hypothesis in light of the Webb Space Telescope's contradictory findings regarding the birth of galaxies and the escalating issue with the Hubble constant. We might be approaching a tipping point when we must drastically alter our current model, which could include rethinking the fundamental building blocks of the cosmos and perhaps even the very essence of time and space itself. Space and time are unique in cosmology. It's far from being a lab experiment involving mice in a labyrinth or chemicals in a beaker. The universe encompasses all existence. It is singular and inaccessible from an external perspective. It cannot be subjected to controlled trials by placing it in a container on a table. Cosmology is so all-encompassing that it compels scientists to investigate fundamental questions about the universe and their place in it, such as the origins of time and space, the rules of natural selection, and the function of the observer. Most regular scientific fields avoid discussing such delicate topics. However, the study of consciousness and quantum physics do touch on comparable ominous topics. Because of the delicate nature of cosmology's work at the intersection of philosophy and science, the field is plagued by the specter of fundamental assumptions that lurk in the tools we use, such as the idea that scientific laws remain constant throughout history. But if we want to know what the problem is with the conventional mode, we may have to start doubting assumptions like that. The idea that physical principles can develop and alter across time has been put out by philosopher Roberto Mangabera Unger and physicist Lee Smolin. There may be a race to see which law is more effective. The even more outlandish idea put forth by physicist John Wheeler is that each and every observation affects the cosmos's future and even its history in the past. To put it mildly, it is not immediately apparent how such radical rethinking of our scientific practices may shed light on the baffling cosmological facts. It would be an enormous leap of faith to reevaluate such cornerstones of our scientific method. Part of the problem is that data are influenced by the theoretical assumptions of data collectors. However, the most effective means of advancement can turn out to be a revolution. This was unquestionably the case with earlier scientific revolutions, such as the heliocentrism of Copernicus, the theory of evolution put out by Darwin, and the theory of relativity put forth by Einstein. The cultural impact of all three hypotheses was substantial. They cast doubt on our inherent uniqueness as a species, 
our belief in our innate ability to see differences between ourselves and other creatures, and our trust in conventional wisdom regarding the passage of time. We might expect similar effects on our self-awareness from any scientific revolution like the one we're envisioning. Philosophy, according to philosopher Robert Kreese, is necessary when additional scientific investigation might not provide a satisfactory answer to a scientific topic. Whether that is necessary to resolve the cosmological issue is still up for debate. On the other hand, if more fine-tuning doesn't work, we might have to come up with a whole new universe story and a whole new way to communicate it. In light of the JWST discoveries, most experts in the field agree that our current understanding of galaxy formation will most certainly need to change. However, will it be a little tweak or a huge change? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.